Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and this is a series of video on robust statistics applied to EEG data. This is part three, which is about the bootstrap approach. So I'm going to read you two quotes uh, to define bootstrap. First, the bootstrap is a computer-based approach for assigning measures of accuracy to statistical estimates. So it can tell you how good your mean is, for example. Second, the central idea is that it may sometimes be better to draw conclusions about the characteristics of a population strictly from the sample at hand, rather than making perhaps unrealistic assumptions about the population. So what does it mean to draw conclusions strictly from the sample at hand? Well, this comes down to the concept of population. We want to draw conclusions about a population. It can be a population of subject, or it can be a uh, a single subject and the population of data trials. Say we're interested in the population of subjects, but we are only collecting data from a few subjects. Of course, we're not interested in these few specific subjects. We're interested in the general human population. When, we, when using parametric statistics, we make the assumption that the probability dis density distribution of the population is Gaussian and can be estimated using the mean and standard deviation of our small sample of subjects. And the bootstrap model, we make the assumption that our best estimate of our population distribution is the distribution of our sample itself. So how do we compute bootstrap? Here is the general recipe. We sample among your observation or data with replacement. With replacement means that you can use twice the same data. Then you compute an estimate such as the mean, for example, and you repeat that. Uh, when the number of repetition is large enough, we have a good approximation of the distribution of the estimate of the sample. So let's first see how we can use Bootstrap to estimate confidence intervals, and then we'll see how to use it to perform statistical inference. On the left, we have original data, which is not Gaussian at all, by the way. We have about 100 values with measure 1, up to about 2,500 values with measure 19. So for example, we randomly uh, sample, uh, say, 100 of these values, and we calculate the mean. So on the right, we have the different iterations, up to 1,000, of doing exactly that, sampling 100 values from this distribution and calculating the mean. Then we sort these values, and we build a histogram. This is our probability density distribution. Finally, we look at the tail of the distribution, the 2.5% and 97.5% tail. We get the 95% uh, confidence interval. It tells us under the bootstrap assumption that if we were to acquire 100 new samples, not draw samples uh, as we did for bootstrap, but instead acquire new data, there's 95% chance they would lie within this interval. Now, but this is not specific to bootstrap. If you assume a Gaussian distribution of value, you could also calculate the 95% confidence interval solely based on the mean and standard deviation uh, of the data. And I show you uh, the formula below. However, in this case, since the distribution of value is not Gaussian at all, it would be highly inaccurate. The advantage of, uh, with bootstrap is that the distribution of original data can have any shape. Also, once you know how to calculate the 95% confidence interval, you can perform st uh, inferential statistics. Mr. Delorme, Mr. Delorme. Yes, me from the past. I'm doing bootstrap on my notebook. As you showed us, I'm at iteration 9 of 1000. Who invented that bootstrap? It's going to take me forever to finish. Me from the past. You're not supposed to do this manually. In fact, People have only been using the bootstrap approach since computers became available. So let's see how to do that with a simple example. Say we have two sets of measurements for two groups of subjects A and B. We want to assess if there is a difference between the two populations of subjects. So here is the original difference uh, value between A and B, and we want to assess if it's significant. And in the null hypothesis, we assume that there is no difference. So we can put all the measurements in the big bucket and randomly draw from that bucket to build the null distribution. So let's do that. S now let's uh, randomly draw value for group A and group B, assuming there is no difference. We randomly draw all the values from the same bucket 
and we draw as many value for A as we're uh, in the original group A and as many value for B as we're in the original group B. As you notice in group A, we have drawn twice the same value A2. This is part of the assumption for using bootstrap uh, and drawing with replacement. So this was one possibility of random sampling and we calculated the difference. Here is another uh, random sampling. So we do 1000 of these and this is all the value we obtain. We are sorting this value from smallest to largest and uh, then we can plot the distribution and see if the original difference lies in the 2.5% lower tail or the 97.5% upper tail of the null distribution difference. If this is the case, then it's significant at p equals 0.05. This is the same thing as we did for confidence interval, except now we're performing inferential statistics. Note that if we were to randomly draw values from a Gaussian distribution, which had the same mean and standard deviation as the pool data from A and B, we would obtain results similar to what we would obtain when applying parametric statistics formula. I'm saying similar because we're doing random draws, so there will always be some random fluctuation in the final results. For parametric, for parametric statistics, the formula we typically use would be equivalent to performing an infinite number of draws from, uh, from a Gaussian distribution. Note that we also have the options of testing for H1 instead of H0. When testing for H0 on the null hypothesis, we build a null distribution assuming there is no difference between A and B. When testing for H1, the alternate hypothesis, we build a distribution for A and a separate distribution for B. We can calculate the p-value based on the overlap between the two distributions. Both approaches are complementary and return similar results. In one case, you reject H0 and in the other one, you accept H1. Also, by the way, uh, the way you use Bootstrap is different based on the data acquisition process. When we have, uh, what we've seen so far was for independent sets, meaning uh, you have two conditions in single subjects analysis, or when you have two groups of subjects, for example, patients versus control. For dependent sets, it, it's different. Uh, this would be, for example, comparing two conditions across a group of subjects with each subject experiencing the two conditions. In this case, you first compute the difference for each subject individually and you bootstrap the difference value. So this is illustrated here. So we have two sets uh, of paired value A and B. We take the difference and then the mean. Uh, then we put all this difference in our bucket and we draw it with uh, replacement. Uh, we get a collection of bootstrap differences value from which we can build the distribution. If zero lies in the tail, uh, we can conclude that the difference estimate is significantly different from uh, zero. Note that we've been using the mean and difference here. However, there is no limitation to the type of measure uh, you can use for bootstrap. For example, we could very well use the t-test as a measure of distance between sets of values instead of using the average difference. Now, the t-test is only used as a measure to assess the distance. We do not compare the t-test value to the t-test table as uh, we would do for parametric statistics. Instead, we compare the t-test value to the null distribution of t-test obtained uh, using Bootstrap. When we have more than two groups, uh, we can use bootstrap ANOVA. As for the t-test, we compare the ANOVA for the original values to the ANOVA bootstrap distribution. So this is the end of this presentation. I want to thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next uh, video.